In this video, I will give you a tour of the interface in AutoCAD Ferment. This video is made for absolute beginners, and I believe that knowing the different parts that make the interface will help your learning journey in AutoCAD be smooth and easy as possible. It is a little overwhelming at the beginning, but I'll do my best to break it down. My name is Jay, and I'm the founder of JCAD. I make AutoCAD tutorials on YouTube, and I focus on AutoCAD for Mac. Let's dive in. As you can see, I've already left some notes to the names of the different parts just to make it easy. And I will not go with them in a certain order. I'll try to go in an order that makes the best sense, in my opinion. So let's start first with the file tab. So the file tab is essentially these tabs that we have on the top. AutoCAD can open multiple projects or multiple files at the same time. So you can hover here and change between the different ones that we have and then go back to the one we were working on. Now, if you open a lot of files, that might slow down your, your computer. So just be mindful of how many file tabs you have at the same time. The next one we're going to talk about is the tool set, which is essentially the combination of these commands that you can see here on the left side. You have the draw section, you have the hatch commands, you have the block, and then and so on. There's also the dimension and the text. And there's also a tab for here. You can switch between the drafting and the modeling. Modeling are commands related to doing 3D work in AutoCAD. Okay, And the drafting is all about 2D commands. Next, we have the command line, which is right here on the bottom. So on the command line, you can essentially write the commands that you want to use. For example, I can type line, and you would see that it will show you a list of the commands and populate whatever starts with the letter L. So for example, if we want to do C, you will see that we will, oops, I went to click here. If you type C, you will get like circle. There is copy somewhere here and all the other commands that start with the, with the letter C. Now you don't have to really use the command line because if you noticed earlier, whenever you type within AutoCAD, if I type here copy, for example, it will anyway start like typing the command right beside the cursor. So the command line is there. You can turn it off or keep it. I personally never use it, but it's there. And anyway, we will move to the next one. The next part that I want to talk about is the properties window, which is right here on the left side, or specifically, I'm sorry, on the right side, actually, on the right bottom side. So the properties, uh, it's called the properties inspector, essentially. So if no object is selected, it will show you what are the current default settings. And what does that mean? So right now it's showing me that if I draw anything, this is the this is going to be the color that's going to be assigned to the object. So if I do a line here, okay, just any line, you will see it got drawn with the white color. If I switch the color right now to red and I do a line again, it will come out in a red color. So this is where you can switch the properties of objects. Now you can also do something else is when you select an object, by I just did I used the selection window on the properties you will see it will tell you what kind of object this is so this one is called a line which we already know but here you will see more information about it you will see the color what current layer what's the line type and so on now you can switch also the properties from here so for example I'll assign blue to this object and now we can see that depending on the object that you select, you will get different properties. For example, the text elements that I already have here, you will see that this one is called mText, which stands for multi-line text. You will see that it has commands or properties related to being a text element, essentially. So here we have things like the, the text height. We have, for example, the line space factor, which I don't use, but like it's good to know that it is here. And style is very important that will be maybe covered in a different video okay so that's what the property window is about the next section i want to talk about is the status bar so status bar is essentially these commands that are right here on the bottom and these are essentially there's like maybe 10 or 15 of them uh, one of them for example allows you to show the grid here so if i click this one the grid will disappear and then if i click it back it will activate it there's another, uh, there's another, these, these are called the status bar, the section, but they're essentially called the drafting settings. So one of these drafting settings is the one that's called polar tracking. I'm going to right click on it and you will see here it has these values 90, 45, and 30. And this refers to angles in AutoCAD. 
What does that mean is that when this command is active, when the polar tracking is active, you are able to draw in a 45 degree line. So I just started a command called the polyline, which is similar to line. And then here you see if I hover over and like I get the angle here, you're gonna see we are locking at 45 degrees. And if I go again to the left, I will again lock at 90 degrees and then another 45, another 45 and so on. So this the this area is called the status bar, and this set this set of commands are called the drafting settings. I will go over the status bar in detail, but I'll leave that for another tutorial, and I'll leave you the link on the top. The next section is the layers, which can be found on the right side, right above the properties. So right now in this file that we have open, you can see that we currently have three layers. So we have the zero layer, we have the one that's called a text, and then a walls. So AutoCAD, similar to other digital design software, it has layers that allow you to organize your objects. Uh, one of the things you can do with layers is essentially control the color. So for example, here, all these text elements, their color is controlled from here. And if I switch it here to red, it will modify all of them. If I wanna make it another color, you get the idea. Another, another um, setting of the layer is the ability to turn on and off a certain layer. So for example, I can click here and I can turn off all the text and then click back and that will turn it on. Now I'm gonna talk about the model versus layout, which you can see all the way on the bottom here. So here you can see we have something called the model and then there is something called the layout, layout one and layout two. And these are layouts or these come by default when you start a new drawing. So what is the difference between the model and the layout? I'll give you a quick, uh, a quick story about these two areas. So the model, you can call it the drawing area. This is where you do everything in your project. I'll jump on a different example, this one right here, um, because this will be relevant for us. So in the model, I did all my drawing. I put all the information, I put all the blocks that I created to use for this project. And then once I finished adding all the elements, I added the walls, doors, windows, I added text and dimension, then on the layout, what I will do is basically organize this and print it to a PDF. So the layout is called also the paper space. This is where the printing happens. Uh, once you finish your project, you can of course print before you finish your project, but you need to come to the layout area to print to a PDF. You can do the printing from the model, but by design, it's made that the layout is where you do the papers or the sheets that make your project and the model is basically your workspace where you do all your design and your drawings. Another way to look at layouts versus model is that the model is actually an infinite space. You can zoom out as much as you want and you can zoom in as much as you want. While the layout is actually finite, it's defined, it has a specific size. For example, the size of this specific layout is actually 36 by 24. And you can see it by right clicking and clicking on edit page setup, we will get this window. And then from here, you can see what is the name of this. The paper size is the 36 by 24 inch. So you can assign that to the layout and choose the different paper sizes. I'll click cancel and we'll go back to layout. Layout essentially has an element called a viewport, which is this one right here. This window or this viewport is what allows us to look into our model space to look at our project and basically place it on this paper. So for example, I can double click inside this viewport and this will activate it. And then I can, well, it's locked right now. I'm gonna unlock it. So that way you can see what I mean. I can zoom in on a specific portion on the viewport. Let's say I only wanna focus on the bedroom and the bathroom and the closet here. So that will allow me to highlight a specific portion of my project on the paper. And as you can see, we have multiple viewports. So here originally what I did is I did one where it shows just the furniture and elements, while the other one I focused on showing the dimension and the text elements. So on the paper, you can have multiple viewports that has a specific size for the layout. And the last element I'm gonna mention is a title block. So this is a plug that I placed here so I can share some information about the project. You only see it on the paper you don't see it on the model. One last thing to mention about the layout is you are able to draw and type text here. For example, if I start the text command and I do on a window here and I type test, 
you can actually do the text right here. Now it's not really visible. I'm not sure why it's not perfectly visible. Okay, it's visible now. Um, but you can do drawing, you can do lines and objects and everything, but usually all of the drawing related to the project happens on the model. And usually here you would add a title block and you would add like some text elements, things like things you would write here, like floor plan proposed with furniture, for example. So that wraps up about the difference between the layout and the model space. And the next portion that I will cover or the section is actually the external references. You can access the external references window by hovering right here on the right side and it's right beside the layers and it's called reference manager. So what are references or what are external references? For example, here, let's say I want to add my logo here to this title block or to this layout on this specific file. So what I can do is use the attach command right here, and then I will choose a picture or the logo. I'm gonna use the JCAD logo. Then I get this window and then I'm gonna click okay. And then for example, I'll place it here and then boom. And now I'm able to have my logo. So once I insert this logo or this picture or another PDF, for example, or another CAD drawing, you can attach all of these different file types. You will see all of them right here on the reference manager. And from here, you can see it says that I have images and then here it will show like details about this image. From here, you can also right click and then say, for example, detach, and that will take it out from the drawing. So that was regarding the reference manager. The next one I want to talk about is the blocks. So you can access the blocks tab from here. It's right beside the reference manager and I'll click on it here. And here you can see I have a list of blocks of objects that are already drawn. And let me explain a little bit more. I will go here to the model space of this project and then I will zoom in here. So for example, I, hear, I have here this table with the chair. So this element right here is actually a block. So what is a block? A block is a collection of objects that I grouped together and then gave them a certain name to save me time so I can always easily use this block for my different projects by just copying and pasting. And whenever you create a block in your drawing or your file, you will actually see it right here in this window. And then from here, for example, this bit, I can right click on it and choose insert in drawing. And then for example, I can place it here and here we go. Now you need to know that I'm only seeing these blocks here because I already have all of them loaded in this particular project. But if we go back to the file that we were using, you will see here when I go to the blocks in the current drawing, it will show empty. So you need to make some blocks or you can get some from our store for free and use them in your project. So that way you can have them populated here. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is what do you do if you lose access to some of these like sections of the interface? So for example, I go here to the layers or the properties. There's a button here, I can undock it. And then let's say I click on the X uh, icon there and now I don't have the properties anymore. You can easily bring it back by going to the top and then from here, go to window and then just choose properties inspector and that will basically make it show again or appear and then you can dock it here and the same just like for properties from the top you can go to window and you can see the toolbar the file tab the tool set status bar command line and then right under we have the layers properties and then we have also the reference manager and that sums up everything that i wanted to tell you about the interface in autocad mac if this video helped you please like and subscribe if you have any questions please let me know in the comments Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.